I've reviewed a lot of mini PCs on the channel, and honestly, I could have done a lot more, but I'm picky. I'm selective about both the companies I work with and the system specs I choose to feature. For one, I usually don't review multiple systems with the same CPU. Once you've seen one 12900HX, you've pretty much seen them all. Barring a few minor exceptions, I've also passed on some systems simply because the specs didn't get me excited. Case in point, I skipped all the mini PCs powered by the 16 core Ryzen 9 7945HX. Now, don't get me wrong, it's a beast of a chip, a 16 core 32 thread mobile processor that can outperform my 32 core Threadripper in multi-core workloads. That's impressive. But what makes Ryzen APUs compelling to me is their integrated graphics. And when AMD added a second chiplet to the 7945HX for those extra cores, they gutted the GPU. We went from 12 compute units down to just two. It's barely more than a display output at that point. A huge step down from chips like the 7940HS or 8945HS that have surprisingly capable iGPUs. Without solid onboard graphics or something else to spice things up, like the B-Link GT1 Mega and Dot combo that lets you add a full-size GPU, a high-end mini PC with no tricks just feels boring to me. So I passed on the 7945HX until now. This is the Minus Forum BD795ISE, and Minus Forum finally made the 7940HX interesting. Instead of cramming it into another boxy mini PC, they dropped it into a proper mini ITX motherboard, and they didn't stop there. This board includes a full PCI 5x16 slot, so I can throw in whatever graphics card I want. Today, we're gonna check out the BD795 ISE, see its specs and features, and then use it to build a custom gaming PC. First, we'll test the Ryzen 7945HX on its own, no GPU, then we'll slap in a brand new RX 9070 XT and see what this ITX system can really do. It's the money. Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems. Let's kick things off by getting this motherboard out of the box and checking it out. Opening things up, we've got the mobile on desktop ITX motherboard itself. It comes with mounting hardware and brackets for the cooling fan, an IO shield, and a Wi-Fi bracket for installing an M.2 Wi-Fi adapter. Now, while the BD795 ISE uses the standard mini ITX form factor, it is a relatively stripped down board, so let's run through the specs and features. First off, like I mentioned earlier, Minus Forum calls this a mobile on desktop or MODT motherboard because it has a mobile SOC soldered directly to the board. In this case, it's the AMD Ryzen 9 7940HX. This SOC includes a Zen 4 16 core 32 thread CPU with a base clock of 2.5 gigahertz and a max boost clock of up to five gigahertz. It also includes 64 megabytes of L3 cache and a configurable TDP, which Minus Forum has just cranked up to 100 watts. For graphics, it has an onboard Radeon RX 610M integrated graphics with two GPU cores running at 2,200 megahertz. The board comes with a CPU heatsink pre-install, but it uses a standard LG 1700 mounting pattern, so you can use most off-the-shelf coolers without issue. There are two SODIMM slots that officially support up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 memory at 5,200 mega transfers per second. For storage, you get two PCI Gen 4x4 M.2 NVMe SSD slots. And most importantly, there's a full PCI Gen 5x16 for adding a graphics card or other PCI expansion device. Power-wise, the board uses standard 24-pin ATX and 8-pin EPS connectors, so it's compatible with any regular ATX power supply. It includes one 4-pin CPU fan header and two 4-pin case fan headers. On the connectivity side, there are standard front panel connectors for power and reset buttons, system LEDs, and front panel audio, and USB 3.2 Gen 1, though there's no front panel USB-C connector. Around the back, the I.O. includes 3.5 millimeter audio input and output jacks, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, 
two USB 2.0 ports, one USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 port with DisplayPort Alt mode, and a Display 1.4 port, and a HDMI 2.1 port for a total of three display outputs. You also get two more USB-A ports rated for five gigabits per second, one thing that's noticeably missing from the board are SATA ports. So if you're planning on using a 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drives, you'll need an expansion card. To flesh out the build, I'm starting with an Intel AX210 Wi-Fi 6E card installed using the included mounting bracket and antenna leads. Next up, a two terabyte Acer Predator GM7000 Gen 4 NVMe SSD goes into the interior M.2 slot. For memory, I'm installing a 32 gigabyte kit of DDR5 rated at 5,600 mega transfers per second. Now the Ryzen 7940HX officially supports up to 5,200 MTS, but this kit uses JDAC standard timings, so it should run just fine. Just keep in mind, this board doesn't support XMP or X profiles. To keep the system whisper quiet, I'm adding a 120 millimeter Noctua NF-A12 by 25 PWM Chromax fan to the included CPU cooler. And finally, I'll attach the IO shield to prep the board for installation. For the case, I'm using the Johnsbow C6 Max. I've outfitted it with a 750 watt FSX power supply and two Arctic P12 slim fans on the bottom for intake, plus a 140 millimeter fan at the top for exhaust. I originally planned on using a different case for this build, but it's still on its way from Japan. Fortunately, I had the C6 Max on hand, technically a micro ATX case, but compact enough to work here and conveniently part of an upcoming review. That said, with a standard 25 millimeter thick fan, the BD795 SE comes in at just 62 millimeters thick, so it will fit in most of the slimmest ITX cases out there, even HTPC cases like this Inwin B4, though the mesh top version of the B4 would definitely be the better choice for airflow for this particular case. The UEFI menu on this board is pretty basic, but it covers the essentials. I was able to adjust the CPU's TDP and temperature limits, fine tune the fan curves, enable rebar support, and assign system memory as VRAM for the integrated GPU. However, there are no advanced CPU or memory timing adjustments available. Before installing a dedicated graphics card, I wanted to test the APU only setup and see how it stacks up against other APU equipped systems. Starting with raw CPU performance in Cinebench 2024, the BD795i scores roughly on par with the Intel based systems in the single core test, beating the Geekcom A8 by 9% and trailing the Seer 9 by just 3%. However, it lags significantly about 35% behind the Apple M4. Now, while the 7945HX and 8945HS should offer similar single core performance on paper, the A8 smaller chassis limits powers and thermal, so the 7945HX stretches its legs better here. With four more cores than the next closest CPU, at least in performance cores, it's no surprise the 7945HX dominates in Cinebench 2024's multi-core test. What's more impressive is the efficiency. The CPU scales from single to multi-core with over 95% efficiency. During the 10 minute multi-core Cinebench 2024 test, the CPU maintained a package power of 100 watts, while the cooling solution kept the CPU temperature under 60 degrees Celsius Delta T. And thanks to my choice of fans, the system remained dead silent. Moving to real world application, things start to shift. In the Puget Systems Photoshop benchmark, the BD795i lands near the bottom only outperforming the older 12th gen Intel system. That's largely due to Photoshop's heavy reliance on GPU acceleration for filters and effects. And this is our first clear indicator of the RX 610M's limitations. Things get worse in Premiere Pro where the BD795i was the only system that couldn't complete the Puget benchmark, again likely due to the lack of GPU horsepower. It did complete the DaVinci Resolve test, but the results weren't great. Resolve is extremely GPU heavy and the BD795i fell behind the older 12th gen Intel system by 21%. 
in a CPU focused After Effects test, a 3D logo reveal project with some GPU acceleration, the BD795i actually performed well, finishing with the third fastest time behind only the Seer 9 and the Mac Mini. Blender rendering tells a similar story. In the average of three CPU rendered scenes, the 16 core 7945HX absolutely crushed it, but switching to GPU rendering and performance tanked. The RX 610M just isn't meant for that workload, and it shows here. To end the productivity testing on a high note, in UL's Procyon Productivity Benchmark, which simulates Microsoft Office multitasking, the BD795i topped the charts, that's thanks to its strong single core bursty performance for snappy workloads and leading multi-core capabilities for heavier tasks like processing large Excel files. Now, of course, we got to talk about gaming performance before wrapping up here. If the GPU accelerated creative and productivity benchmarks didn't already give it away, the 3D Mark Night Raid test makes it crystal clear. The BD795i's RX 610M scored roughly three times lower than most of the other systems. Even the outdated Intel UHD graphics beat it by 78%. As for actual games, I tested some older and less demanding titles at 1080p using the lowest graphical presets, and not a single one is what I'd call playable. Even the business-focused Geekcom IT12 with integrated XE graphics delivered better gaming performance than the RX 610M. Weaker graphics performance is exactly why I initially skipped over the Ryzen 9 7945HX in most mini PCs. At the prices those systems were going for, I expected them to handle at least some basic GPU accelerated workflows, but they just couldn't deliver. The BD795i though, isn't a mini PC. It's a full featured mini ITX motherboard with a proper PCI slot ready for a full size desktop graphics card. So let's give this Minisform system the GPU it deserves by installing the Radeon RX 9070 XT. Now, I think the 9070 XT hits a sweet spot in terms of price to performance, making a great match for the BD795i. Uh, that said, I'm fully aware that GPU pricing and availability right now is a hot mess. I had to take a very roundabout, inexpensive route to get my hands on this one. Was it worth it? Well, make sure you're subscribed if you want the full breakdown in a future video. But for today, this upgrade should give our mini ITX system a serious performance boost. With the dedicated GPU installed, I retested several hardware accelerated workflows and as expected, the improvements were significant. Photoshop performance jumped by 25%. Not only did it complete the Premiere Pro benchmark this time, but it did so with a five digit score. DaVinci Resolve saw a massive boost as well. Performance improved by over six times and in Blender GPU rendering, the RX 9070 XT absolutely blew the doors off previous results. Shifting over to gaming, the system went from a complete non-starter to a legit 1440p powerhouse. For this round, I tested newer and more demanding titles and compared the RX 9070 XT running on the BD795i to the same GPU paired with a Ryzen 9 7900X 3D desktop system. In Black Myth Wukong at 1440p using the cinematic preset and FSR set to 50, both systems scored identically. The desktop Zen 4 CPU offered no measurable performance advantage. The same held true in Cyberpunk 2077 at 1440p with FSR set to native AA. Again, nearly identical results. However, in Starfield, which leans heavily on CPU resources, the mobile Ryzen platform fell about 14% behind the desktop system. And in Space Marine 2 at 1440p with FSR set to balanced, the desktop setup came in around 7.5% faster. But here's the context that matters. While the 7900X 3D did outperform the 7945HX in some CPU bound titles, the Ryzen 9 7950X, AMD's closest match in terms of core count and architecture, cost more by itself than the entire BD 795SE motherboard. So even if the desktop system wins in raw peak performance, the BD 795SE still delivers an incredible amount of power for the price. So wrapping things up, 
the Minis Forum BD795 ISE, even as a standalone system, is generally impressive for productivity and development workloads that rely heavily on CPU performance it holds its own. We're talking tasks like software compilation, running virtual machines, code testing, 3D simulations, large data set processing, and even music production or batch photo editing. Anything that leans on strong single core and multi-core performance without needing a powerful GPU. But what makes this board truly compelling for me at least is the ability to pair a full-size dedicated graphics card with a very capable 16 core CPU at a surprisingly affordable price. That combination opens up a ton of possibilities, not just for gaming, but also for GPU accelerated workflows like video editing, VFX work, 3D modeling, CAD, motion graphics, and real-time rendering. It's a perfect foundation for a compact high-performance content creation rig or development workstation, and the value is hard to ignore. A Ryzen 9 7950X alone paired with a mini ITX motherboard, starts at around $650. The BD795 ISE gives you equivalent core count and architecture for just $400. That's a $250 savings right there, which could easily go towards upgrading your GPU or other critical parts of a build. And despite the lack of SATA ports, the board still has tricks up its sleeve. The PCI by 16 slot supports bifurcation, meaning you can drop in something like an ASUS Hyper M.2 by 16 card and expand your NVMe storage significantly. That opens the door for creative home lab setups. Or in my case, I'm seriously considering pairing this board with a PCIe capture card to build a compact HDMI capture and pass-through system. So. If you've been looking for a flexible, compact, and high-performance platform that won't break the bank, the BD795 ISE definitely deserves a closer look. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and let me know what you'd build with this board in the comments. Would you go for a gaming rig, a production machine, or something completely different? And if you wanna see more unique PC hardware reviews and DIY builds like this one, Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss what's coming up next. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.